Hello everyone, T-Man978, reviewing Transformers Masterpiece, the original Transformers Masterpiece MP3, Destron Air Commander Starscream. A lot of people would like to see my Transformers reviews, and while I'm waiting for Ramjet, Masterpiece Ramjet to finally get here, BBTS only got a partial shipment, so now here I am waiting while everybody else and their mother reviews him already. <laughs> But anywho, I wanted to get this out. And unless, by some miracle, I get him tomorrow on Tuesday, this will be my Wednesday review, and Ramjet will be my Thursday review. I don't have this marked anywhere anyway, anymore, but I try to definitely put out a review on Thursday. But anywho, as you can see, back in the day, they cared more about the designer getting recognition and whatnot with Masterpiece. They didn't know what the hell they wanted to do with Masterpiece. Here's that. You've pretty much seen boxes like these, but maybe you haven't seen this image. They, and there's that. Here's an actual image of the designer right here. Inside you get the same typical Masterpiece Seeker stuff. Like this collector's card right there, which is terribly flimsy by today's standards. This right here, with I guess a little bio and his tech specs. He also came with a sticker sheet right here, with a bunch of interesting stickers. It was just like a do-it-yourself type of thing. They had suggestions, but you could do whatever you wanted. And this is cool, they had these Waspinator stickers for that time that he possessed Waspinator in Beast Wars. And they even have like stuff like this Waspinator emblem right there. Which is cool, Crimzeek, and a bunch of other stuff, but yeah, there you go with that. As you can see, I didn't use a ton of these. He also came with the survey thing. I had no idea QR codes existed in 2006. I thought that was a thing that came out when iPhone was released, which was in mid-2007, so I just learned something. Of course, you get the same display base. One difference between this and some of the Hasbro releases and whatnot, this is a sticker. It actually had no name on it whatsoever. And here's that little Megatron gun clip thing under there. Stored to never be used. Here's his masterpiece booklet. And as you can see, it just says Takara down there. It was before they became Takara Tomy. And here's a better look at this artist rendition of him. And this is what we used to get when they tried it. Well, I think they still do this when they tease us on which figure is going to be next. And back here you see that we don't get this anymore. Especially with the Autobot cars. They have every version of him right there. Or mostly every version of the Je every Japanese version, I should say. Here's some cartoon images of him. Starscream's Brigade right there. Let's see anything else important. How to put on the stickers. The instructions, this stuff right here, and most of this other stuff I'm going to show you as I do the review. And here is Starscream. Like I said, they didn't know what they wanted to do with the Masterpiece design when they first released it. And this is really the second Masterpiece mold ever. So what they decided to do in the long run, or eventually, was make a realistic style jet and give it a realistic color scheme. Binotech and alternators are out around that time so I guess they're going with that thing because Binotechs were unofficial masterpiece so I guess they figured we can't make one sixteenth scale or what size were Binotechs? I think Binotech was one sixteenth scale. They couldn't make a one sixteenth scale jet because he would be absolutely huge. But anyway, I put a few stickers on here or there. I had to put these Decepticon symbols on there because they weren't there. These weren't there. The stripe was here. I believe this is a sticker, yes. I put 1978 there. You should, you should be able to figure that out. I put this Decepticon symbol there. And yeah, you have seen the Seeker mold hundreds and hundreds of times let me get him off of here come on 
But yeah, here are his missiles. Probably won't see these in robot mode. Of course, you can take his null ray cannons and plug them in here if you wanted to. Or just replace the missiles with the null ray. Shoot, 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 pow, pow, pow. Inside the cockpit, we have Dr. Arkaville, who is basically not painted besides his lab coat. You can see his little face. They could have put some silver on there for his little helmet that he had or whatever. But they didn't. Inside the cockpit, you see his seat is this tan color right there. And the radar inside his nose cone is like a pukey green color. And not silver like most of the other ones. Let's see. This little air brake back there is... I believe this is actually diecast. I could be wrong. I always thought that was diecast, but I have a feeling that's just plastic. His thrusters right here have been painted silver with a little bit of air brushing right there. Of course, these move and twist all around. And you can see his engines back there. You can move these right here, move these back here. Still, you can move this forward, which unfortunately pulls that forward. I guess you can use that as part of the transformation. But pretty much besides the landing gear down here. Come on. Work with me, little toy. I always have these freaking moments where I keep fiddling with this toy, wishing I would have pushed the pause button. But anyway, don't transform on me. Same way as pretty much all the other Seekers besides Ramjet as far as the rear landing gear. But yeah, there's his landing gear. He would roll nice, but my surface doesn't really work well with rolling because everything just slides. All these wheels do spin and they do work. So overall, MPO3 mode is the most solid, one of the most solid jet mode on any transformer like freaking ever. I mean, unless you knew this was a transformer, you wouldn't know it was a transformer. It just looks like a jet. It looks like a model jet, and that is freaking awesome. I don't know how he's doing it, but Dr. Arkerville didn't fall out this seat, which is awesome. Because that doesn't happen with the newer figures. Anyway, I think I'm, I'm going to skip the transformation. You've been seeing this thing transformed a lot lately if you've been following Ramjet. And I definitely did a thorough, thorough review of the Toys R Us Starscream. You can watch that. Only thing different in the transformation is these tail wing fins do not slide up in the transformation. Everything else is the exact same except... These pieces right here are a little bit extra, but you'll see that, and I'll go over in robot mode. Before robot mode, I'm jumping ahead of myself. The second issue this thing had is some brittle, brittle plastic right here. It's broke right there, but as you can see, I can still transform it to jet mode. And luckily, because of the attachments right here, it still connects to his body in robot mode, which is for fortunate, but pretty much... Everybody had this problem where this would eventually break if you transformed it too many times. Which is not very fun because you have a transformer because you want to transform them. Anyway, if I didn't already say it, I like the jet mode. Robot mode. Just because I don't think I've ever seen anybody do this in a review. He can wear these missiles on his arms instead of his null, or null ray blasters. Here he is with his proper null ray cannons right there. And to be completely honest with you, he's an awesome, like, figure, but he was never the G1 cartoon accurate masterpiece star scream I, I always wanted. Number one, he wears these tail fins right here on his hips as looking like sword sheaths. Now, to me, I just feel like they, they should have went the extra mile and actually put swords in there. That would have been actually something nice. I mean, they changed the design up so much, they might as well just went the whole 
away and just did that. Because of their trying to keep with a real world color scheme, they wanted to put some of his blue in there where it could be like hidden or where you don't see it. But they also wanted to incorporate the red instead of making this red too. So it could actually match up with G1. They only made the chest red. And under here you can see his cluster bombs like all of these molds have right there. What else? Yeah. Some of the stuff I can see that they there's no way they could get, get around it. Like the nose cone being back here. There's no way with the way he transformed that that big ass nose cone could hide anywhere inside his body. And keep a good looking jet mode. And you could tell that they cared a lot about the jet mode. Just to show this off because it's in the book. I guess I don't know whether this is some type of flight mode. When he flies he opens all this. To look all powered up and whatnot, but there is an option right there. The main problem with this thing was stability. I love that this over the MP11 has ankle pivot, like depending on how wide you could get his legs, you could still put his feet flush to the ground, and then you just have to worry about moving these thrusters to act as a heel spur. And since they don't like extend or anything. They've never been a good hill spur, but as you can see, he is capable of standing, which I love. And like I said, this wing is broke, but it just pegs into the back, which is good. Die cast, he has a die cast piece right here. All of this inner black frame right here is die cast, which is cool. His waist is capable of turning a smidge. And if I'm skipping anything, I'm sorry. I'm going to link, or we'll put a link in the description for my masterpiece, other Toys R Us masterpiece, MP11 mold, Starscream, where I was very, very thorough. The only thing different between this mold and that mold is these guns pull off on a peg. The arms are a little bit thicker here. I love the design the choice they made right here as far as not making a big metal, a big plastic spike be hanging off right there on the wings like the ankle pivot the head is different right there is not painted black like it was in the cartoon you can pull this up grab his little chin pull that down spin it around and give him a smirky expression which I typically leave on there for him because that's so Starscream and what else these little things already went into there. If you don't like them, what a lot of people did is pull these off. And then you can get a little bit more outward motion. Set them to the side. And that works very well for him. I don't know how, looking at how this is designed, but this thing is capable of kicking up way higher than you would think. The knees are double jointed. They bend about that much. So it's more than a 90 degree bend, but it's not very that much exciting. Seeing the little robot designs in there that's unpainted is a little bit cool, but as far as the actual articulation, it's not that cool, especially since he can't stand up on his own. His flight stand helps him out with that, of course. I wasn't going to do any comparisons, but as you can see right here, without those little hip skirts on there, he can actually do wide-legged stances with both feet still on the ground because of the ankle pivot or whatever. And this is actually very sturdy right there. Like, in comparison, like this mall right here, he can do wide-legged stances, but you have to bend, twist the hips so that the feet can be flush, and then... With the thruster right here, it kind of fights you and whatnot. So if you do that same position, the feet are just going to be a little bit awkward looking because they twist that way. And that doesn't look right as far as ankle pivot. So at the end of the day, he's a cool little piece of history. He's a cool version of Starscream, especially if you like to have a realistic jet 
looking star screen but he has a little bit too many problems like these hip skirts if you want to keep them on there you don't feel comfortable popping off the ball joints or making him a parts former like the original g1 star screen uh, they get in the way and hinder the hip articulation which is frustrating the wings get in the way the wings break he just he feels good like the plastic is good and whatnot but he's just riggedy and i didn't mention this but these little pieces right here that move they like to pop off as well the wings don't like to stay pegged in his back luckily enough for me this one does stay in there but i don't know if you just like this color scheme and you know what to expect with this mold and you still like it anyway I say get it, but other than that, I just say hunt down this version of Starscream because it is way more fun and superior. And they corrected a lot of stability. Like, I can actually do that. And I showed that off in his review. So, definitely check out my review for Toys R Us Starscream, Masterpiece Starscream. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a like, share, subscribe, comment, T Man 978 out of here.